very important before we embark the journey of uh, lean digital. I always use lean digital, not digital lean. The primary uh, purpose of that is lean should precede the digital, isn't it? So here what we are cautioning here, don't digitize without lean because there are many organizations that have dealt with, even I've been dealing with currently in Oman, where they have automated a lot of processes and blame the people in the sense, I have created a lot of technology and modules, et cetera. You guys don't use it. So primarily what happened here, they have created all the wasteful activities or process digitally enabled, which means it's a super waste. Just to cite a quote from Peter Drucker, uh, there, is, there is nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which should not be done at all, which means I create an activity which is a waste and digitally I optimized and I'm going to do super waste. That's the whole idea of uh, this particular slide I'm dealing with, which means apply lean first, and then you go for the digitally enabled. Similarly, there are disconnected processes. Many organizations, you and me know by now, it's all designed functionally, functional silos. And there are disconnected processes between one function to the other. To cite an example, one of the industrial estate which I am dealing with, where the entire operations is through a system, whereas the customer service is not at all through a system, which means it doesn't have any online systems or digitally enabled processes which means if the customer has to approach, he has to do a lot of manual activities. There is no traceability of what the customer requirements. Subsequently, when you convert a prospect into a customer, these disconnected processes, when you take it with a new technology, I'm just connecting with disconnected process with new technology, meaning I have disconnected processes and bring in new technology and then superimpose, and you are going to create super waste. So which means the technology is available and it's available to your competitor as well. It's open market nowadays no entry barrier, which means you can buy any technology. So in the sense, if you have not articulated what value proposition you are delivering to the customer and the processes which are all not absolutely waste and you have created an efficient process, then you go for digital, then it will produce the result what you intended. Okay. Like customer perspective, you can see the pictures given here, one which is your design, one which is your design here and how the user uses it. So what does it mean? So many times when you know technology to run ERP, uh, you bring in and many times I've seen people complain. So we have brought best technology, best module, best features, uh, you know, incorporated, but people don't use it. You just use this Excel or you just use this notebook, etc. So why? Because you have not addressed the basic simple form of requirements from the customer. Customer just walks across like this is the simplest requirement. Unless you know the customer preference and the way he likes it, he uses it, which delivers value, isn't it? And you will not be able to deploy technology for the benefit of either for the company or for the customers. Capture the essence of the lean in four different uh, pillars and then each one what digitally we can enable so that lean and digital can be compared with certain examples. So how I have done in a simplest form of it, uh, one is the customer value creation, eliminate waste, flow and continuous improvement uh, to put it in the form of uh, essence. So let me compare this with lean digital because we talk about lean and lean digital. The first one is creating the customer value and the product to meet the customer uh, satisfaction. So lean digital way of doing it is customer touch point through social media channel communication and information gathering, live information gathering, customer preference and offer products and services. There are technology available to gather continuously and continuously provide value. This is SSA's experience in fact. Don't worry about there are so many boxes in the value chain. I will make it uh, simple for you to understand. This is the logistics company, Postal Logistics. The sender is sending from uh, different locations within Oman as well as from abroad. And it gets collected, picked up and transferred here. And it comes to an hub and then scanning and sorting. And then again, vehicle comes and then it goes to different locations to deliver. This is simple, sender and receiver. And I'm just facilitating the whole value chain to deliver the place where it is supposed to be. Now, this is how they used to do. There are no uh, digital tools to enable this particular value chain because value chain largely is going to be the same in the sense, collect, deliver it to the customer where it intended to deliver. But the point is here, many processes here, when the transport truck comes here, many times there are a lot of volume with that result, the resources are less because sometimes there is no volume, the resources are more. So they were not able to manage resource optimization, neither timely nor meeting the SLA. And with that result, you know, you don't deliver on time to the customer as promised. Also when the bag is ready, because 
Finally, the locations are sorted and the bag is ready. The transportation doesn't know when the bag will be ready because there is no defined time as well as the information sharing if it is in advance or late, etc. So value chain largely managed without any digitally enabled uh, uh, delivery. So what we brought to start with, we brought this particular uh, throughout the value chain one by one, I will explain pre alert. So before the transportation truck comes, people know here different products, express, registered parcel and other ordinary items, etc. The information sent well in advance so that the supervisor manages, OK, for this product, there are five people required here. You have to start 10 people with different timings. So they are able to arrange the value chains accordingly based on the resource requirement pre alert. Next is the OCR. And of course, you know that it, it, pu it pushes all the items, scans it, data entry and even the sorting and the baggage baggage is ready. And throughout this process, data getting captured. Also, there is a monitoring system, visual dashboard through a TV, and then it shows how many things you have done, how many of them still pending for some other issue, and you come to know immediately to correct it. So exposing the problem much faster. You don't put it in the wrong bag. So that's also taken care because it doesn't go to the wrong bag because it's all coded and uh, scanned, and uh, uh, it recognizes where it has to go. Also, once the bag is ready, the SMS app, there is an SMS goes to the driver app, which tells for that particular driver allotted certain location and he knows, OK, the bag is ready and he can come and pick it up. So we have eliminated the entire waiting time as well because it's connected across the upstream, midstream and downstream value chain. Also, when it goes to the customer, the driver sends the app, um, sorry, the SMS and it gets delivered, which means if you look at the sender to the rest pre alert to the SMS, the value chain is enabled and changed. Uh, of course, the layout, etc., changed. I didn't bring those information here. Layout changed, resource optimization done, and the way people do activities changed, etc., are part of the details. But the point is digitally enabled. We brought it all from the lean thinking, how best it can leave from the hub the moment it enters. What is the simplest way of doing it? Digitally enabled, uh, uh, you know, benefit. So if you can see on the left extreme, the before, uh, there are a lot of information here. Let me draw your attention to the one you need to look at it. If you look at here, zone one, 64% on time, zone two, 68 and zone three, 45. Before, there were a lot of issues. Post that, we are we are able to achieve 95, 90 and 70 percentage of on time delivery because the one which I just explained, smooth flow, information moving faster, information shared through the next process and picks up. There's no delay in between we were able to achieve. This is one of the important success story we have created uh, in the last Yes, please. Uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Veen and Nanda for the very good presentation. Hope you can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, right. my, my question is often, you know, organizations think uh, they are good in what they do um, without realizing the biggest room for improvement, because room is the room for improvement. Now, um, just looking at if an organization wants to um, initiate a project on lean or something. What is the starting point? Um, see, what, what type of homework should the company do before engaging somebody like yourself or, you know, maybe having house resources or something? So what, what is the starting point from the uh, senior management? Okay. Uh, great, great. Shad, I know where you're coming from, but that's, uh, given the role you're playing at the organization. Uh, Nanda, to go first, uh, I have started here. It will be nice to have, have you come in on this. Sure, sure. I'll just share my experience. You know, many times, you know, it's a very, very uh, important question, you know, where to start, um, you know, so that the buy in will be very high. What I felt, you know, even at the organizational level or at the team level, when you start any improvement, even the payroll processing, what he uh, Naveen mentioned in one of the companies we have deployed it, even at that level or at the organization level, one which is, you know, uh, if if it is bothering the customer or the internal customers, you know, if it can be articulated as much uh, possible, so people immediately grasp it and then they do it. Because why I'm saying this? Because when we were doing these projects, suddenly CEO came in and then he said, um, you know, this this project can you take it up and I will give you time next one week to find out what is going wrong. Because uh, many times, you know that many times we don't find the CEO's time available for many such updates, but the moment it hits them and uh, it's articulated well and hits them, then they come back and say, hey, can you take it within next 10 days? You need to fix this. I need to know the answer. So I always see this many times happen. 
So when it is articulated well and hits them in the sense in positive note, in the sense what is bothering, then people would love to take it immediately. Not uh, earlier days, I remember uh, 15 years ago when Lean and Six Sigma, it's more of you know deployment, people love to, but now it's no more. What is the purpose? What way it makes the change? Then people would love to uh, immediately embrace it. Uh, that's how I see it. Um, Navin. I just add a few points here and again question which are, uh, uh, in our experiences uh, as nanda pointed out the first lever leadership commitment if the boss wants it it will get done somehow uh, this is of course the ceo and the executive leadership team a very crucial role because they set the priority of where they will be organized uh, the second aspect or the second lever in our experience that works uh, goal development uh, coaching country and various other variants of it uh, in uh, in in my view, in our experience, the so sooner you get that out of the way, in terms of letting people know what is the of the organization, what are the short and long term uh, objectives for the senior leadership team, and cascading them down to the front line makes it very clear. Uh, that's the second lever. The third lever, of course, is review regi regime, uh, meaning you just can't set goals and forget about it, and then at the end of the year, it's not reviewed and people aren't held to account. Having some discipline on the reviews will help. That could be a monthly or quarterly review regime, wherein the goals are tracked and the areas where people are falling short, they are uh, they are given a heads up so that they can catch up. And the fourth lever is reward and motivation. Uh, so people know uh, that on one hand, yes, their career progression, uh, the rewards are linked with contributing on the priority areas for the company uh, and giving them a positive motivation by rewarding them. Uh, these are some levers that work. And of course, there is a longer deck. It's a, it's a very interesting topic, change management in itself. And there are, our chairman wrote the 10 steps for change management. If it helps, Nishad, I'll send that deck to you.